close your eyes. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing in your body. When you breathe in, where do you feel it? When you breathe out, where do you feel it? Try to stay right there with that feeling. See how long you can stick with it. You're developing good qualities of your mind as you do this. Mindfulness, keeping something in mind. Alertness, watching what you're doing. And ardency, wanting to do this well. When those come together, then the mind can get into concentration. And when the mind is concentrated, you can develop some discernment. All good qualities of mind. So out of something really simple like this, just staying with your breath. These are good qualities, not only when you're sitting here trying to keep the breath in mind, but when you try to ta work on any task. These are good qualities you need, need to have developed. So work on them right here, right now. Today we're commemor marking the anniversary of Patrick's death. He was a member of our community who died suddenly last year around this time. It makes us stop and think. He died young, died unexpectedly. And death doesn't come with a warning. It doesn't say that today it's going to come, so get your affairs ready. You have to be prepared. You have to be ready to go all the time. As John Lee said, it's like knowing that you're going to have to migrate someday. The order will come quickly and you'll have to go right away. So you want to have your stuff prepared. What does it mean to have your stuff prepared? Well, you can't take things with you when you die. But you can take good qualities of the mind. And if you want to send something to someone who's already passed away, you can't send material things, but you can send qualities of the mind. So this is where the real focus is. As the Buddha said, your real wealth in life is not the wealth of the body, material wealth. It's the wealth of good qualities in the mind. Things like conviction, believing that your actions really do make a difference in life. And the quality of your actions depends on the quality of your intentions. So you work on your intentions. Based on that, you develop a sense of shame and compunction. Shame over the idea that if you were to stoop to do something unskillful, you'd just be ashamed to have the people that you respect see you do that. Compunction is just realizing, if I do something unskillful, the results are not going to be good. They may not come right away, I may not see them right away, but someplace down the line, the results will be bad. Do I want to create bad causes that would lead to bad, bad results for myself? And the answer should be no. And based on this, you develop the precepts, like the precepts we took just now. Making up your mind that you're not going to kill, steal, have illicit sex, lie, or take intoxicants under any circumstances. And holding true to those, those vows to yourself, those promises you make to yourself. It's a promise to do good and to create good conditions in your life. And then there's learning. You learn about the Dharma, about what really is skillful and what's not. You're generous. This is where you take your material wealth and you turn it into wealth in the mind through your generosity. And finally, you use your discernment to, figure, to notice when you're doing something that's causing suffering, to see that it's actually causing suffering right now. It may be subtle, it may be refined, but it's there. And you want to learn how to not to do those things. And you figure out how not to do them. That's what the discernment is all about. Discernment is practical. You see, there are things that you like to do, but they give bad results, that you know how to talk yourself out of doing them. There are things that you don't particularly care to do, but you know they will give good results down the line. You talk yourself into doing them. That's a sign of true discernment. It's practical. It makes a difference in your actions. When you have these qualities of mind, that's when the mind is wealthy. You can go anywhere and you're safe. You're well provided for. And if you want to share anything with those who have passed away, you can send this current well-being that you develop in the mind from this inner wealth. Because the minds of the world do connect not only through our speech and through looking to one another, but also through our minds. You want to make that connection a good connection. So focus on the qualities of your mind as your most important wealth. So when the time comes to go, the order comes in, you have to migrate, get you ready to go. As the Buddha said, the good things you do are like a shadow that follows you. It doesn't have any weight. You don't have to carry it. If you take it on a plane, they don't charge you for it. But the bad things you do are like heavy weights that you have to drag around. So you ask yourself, which do you want to take with you? Well, take the good things. Don't let yourself be tied down with unskillful things, unskillful attitudes in the mind. And that way you stay here in the world, you live at peace and you live with well-being. When the time comes to go, you go in peace and you go in well-being.
You've got all your bases covered.